Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice differential equation. We have y prime equals y over x plus the quantity y over x squared. And where does this problem come from? Well, kind of. This problem has been suggested a while ago, about a year ago, by this user. Uh, I'm sorry, I just didn't stick with the original submission and just took away the two because it kind of looked a tiny bit better. Anyways, you can go ahead and try that version and see what you're going to be getting differently. Okay, so let's go ahead and thank you again for this submission. And you can always suggest problems, either make a comment. Most of the time I pull these from comments and I try to read all the comments and try to respond as much as possible. And also there's a form that you can submit, but I rarely check it out. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. So we have y prime equals y over x plus y over x quantity squared. By the way, we could also write y prime as the y over the x indicating that we are differentiating with respect to x. But once you know that, it's not necessary. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. First of all, notice that y over x is being repeated. So the right hand side, this is important. The right hand side can be written as a function of y over x. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now, that gives us an idea and that should give us an idea. We can use substitution. So why not replace y over x with something? What will be appropriate for y over x? Doesn't matter as long as you use a different, different variable like u. How about u? Okay. So let's go ahead and replace y over x with u. Of course, that has some implications, which we'll talk about. But we, this gives us y prime equals u plus u squared, which looks fairly simple, much, much better than the original equation. The problem is we kind of need to associate y and u from this because we do need some x in the equation or at least uh, we need to be able to express it because think about it. When you write y prime as the y over the x, which we're gonna do in a little bit, then we would really need something in terms of x, not in terms of u, right? Otherwise, we're gonna go back to square one. So let's go ahead and from here, cross multiply. That gives us y equals ux. And then we can differentiate both sides again. We're going to differentiate with respect to x because that's our independent variable. And to differentiate a product, because u is a function of x, x is a function of x, you basically have the product of two functions of x, even though x is x. It doesn't matter, we're gonna use the product rule. What is the product rule? Remember, when you have the two product, like the product of two or more functions, you differentiate the first one, multiply by the second function, and then you differentiate the second function, x, which is one, and multiply by the first function. You don't, I don't, I didn't write one because one times u is u and the derivative of x is one. Get the idea? So this is gonna be super critical in our equation. We're gonna replace y prime with that. Great. So that, that way we're gonna get rid of all the y's and use u and x together. Make sense? You can't have three variables, right? That's gonna be crazy. So now let's replace y prime with u prime x plus u. And that's pretty standard for these kinds of equations. And then we're gonna get u, ply, u plus u squared. This is awesome because it allows us to subtract u from both sides, or you can just say, hey, u cancels out. u minus u is zero, that's it. This is really cool. This gives us u prime times x equals u squared. Don't try to simplify u prime and u are different things, but instead write u prime as what? u is a function of x, so u prime is du over dx. And we use this a lot. For example, sometimes you, we, we write du as u prime dx, especially if we are integrating. Make sense? Okay. Then the differentials become important. So let's go ahead and isolate. Well, first I'm going to write u prime as du over dx, and then multiply by x, that's equal to u squared. And then what you want to do is maybe multiply both sides by dx first. And a lot of people say, oh, you can't do that. This is not a fraction. Guess what? It is a fraction. Okay. So we can do it. Yes, it's perfectly fine. In my opinion, at least. Right. So here's what we want to do. 
we want to bring the u's on one side and x is on the other side. So we can separate the variables. Guess what? This is a separable differential equation after the substitution, of course, right? So you got to take that crucial step. U du over u squared is dx over x. The rest is fairly easy, but we're still going to go through it because there's a couple complications. Well, some stuff that we need to go over. So we're going to differentiate both sides. And if you differentiate 1 over u squared, think about it. The derivative of which function is u, 1 over u squared? Well, if you know that, by the way, this is differentiating with respect to u. So just think about 1 over x squared. How do you get 1 over x squared? If you differentiate 1 over x, you get negative 1 over x squared. So, aha, uh -huh. it must be negative 1 over x. That gives us 1 over x squared when differentiated. So the integral of du, du over u squared is going to be negative 1 over u. Great. Don't use the constant yet because we're going to use it on the right-hand side. You don't need to use it on both sides because the difference of two constants is another constant. What about dx over x? Isn't that logarithms? Yeah. The power rule doesn't apply because if you think about differentiating this or integrating, I mean, with the power rule, you're going to add 1 to this, x to the power of 0, divide by 0. Uh-oh, that's not good. You don't want to do that. Why? Because if you differentiate uh, ln x, you get 1 over x. But wait a minute, isn't this supposed to be absolute value? Well, I don't like absolute value. Too bad. No offense. But uh, if x is positive, this is true. If x is negative, then use neg ln negative x. You should be fine. But let's just assume x is positive. And now I'm going to use my constant. Since I'm, I'm going to be using a couple constants along the way. I just want to start with c sub 1, or some people call this c1, like me. Okay, great. What do you do next? There's a couple of things to do. You can actually cross multiply and divide, or switch these, because these two are multiplied, so they can switch. In other words, u becomes negative 1 over ln x plus c1. How nice is that? Wait a minute. What is u, though? <laughs> Who are you? What are you? Okay, so u is a variable that stands for, let's go back and find that. In case you forgot, take good notes. That's important. y over x is equal to u. So I can replace u with y over x, super duper. So that takes us from the u world to the x and y world, okay? Or from u world to the y world, I guess. That would be appropriate to say. And then multiply both sides by x, and then you would get this. Super duper. Now, what do you do with that? Nothing. You can leave it like that. Or if you want to do a little bit more work, you can. For example, if you want the ln to absorb c sub 1, I don't like that. So I want to, uh, I want to make it a little better. Uh, can we write c1 as ln of c2, which is another constant, and then use the property of logarithms. So I can now write it as negative x over ln c2 times x. Uh-oh, that's better. Single ln, right? That's why. And of course, c2 is a constant, so we're allowed to do that. Making sure x should not equal 1 because ln... Wait a minute. What, what am I talking about? I meant uh, x should not be 1 over c2 because if that's the case, then we get, we're get we dividing by 0. You don't want that. So there are some exceptions, but that's what it is. So if c sub 2 is 1, then... Come on, the ability y equals, or it's the apple pen. I don't know. It's Why is this happening? I have no idea. It's just acting weird after a while. Some, some type of static. I don't know. Maybe the, the iPod is too old and I need a new one. Okay, anyways. So from here, y equals negative x over ln x. Again, if c sub 2 is positive 1, this should be just ln x. Now we can go ahead and check this out. For example, I can just differentiate it. The derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator which is 1 over x times the numerator divided by the denominator squared that's the rule right so that, these are going to cancel out plus sign and we're going to end up with one so it's going to be y prime is going to be 1 minus ln x divided by ln x quantity squared in the meantime uh or at the same time whatever we need to look at y over x but y over x if you remember is negative 1 over ln x. By the way, I'm just checking the uh, simplified version of this, like I use this one, but that's okay. It should work in the general case as well. But if this is y over x, then y over x quantity squared would be 1 over ln x quantity squared. And guess what? If you add these two things and make a common denominator, you get that. How cool is that? So y prime equals y over x plus y over x quantity squared is satisfied. And let's go ahead and check Wolfram Alpha. 
ta da 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 yes well from alpha can handle this problem fine and this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye